the Panthers' defense has to be able to stop the Bears. It's simple, but it's factual. And I'm actually gonna gonna lean on the personnel here. They don't have the to use a a Dan Morgan kind of a phrase here. They don't have the dogs on defense Mm-mm. to do what you need to do against a Caleb Williams. Rookie quarterbacks, and you will hear this. I'm not breaking news here. This is what every coach in the history of the world will say. Rookie quarterbacks have to be put on their back. They have to be put on the ground. They have to be hit repeatedly to shake them up. Charles Harris got one early, a sack, and that was it. That From that point on, Caleb Williams was allowed to, to make him miss. He was able to stay alive. He was able to throw the ball away. He was able to extend plays. You didn't have the dogs to get them on the ground. They had two quarterback hits the whole game. And one of them was I mean, was that sack. That's just not good enough. You did okay stopping the run. But you let Caleb Williams have his best game as a pro. That's It's unacceptable, but it's also going to happen with the players you have on your defensive roster. It's going to happen when when and by the way, I thought Trevin Trevin Wallace played well. Mm-hmm. Uh one of the few guys that was all over the place. Uh made a real good stop on fourth down. Um he was starting in place of two injured starting off ball linebackers. Like your 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 defensive roster was already not the 85 Bears and then on top of that, you dealt with some injuries. Derek Brown's gone, the 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 you go on and on. You just don't have the dudes. Evero, the defensive coordinator, uh, has to be out there pulling a rabbit out of his hat every game. And Caleb Williams is physically gifted enough that if if you break through, right, if you get through the, the offensive line as a rusher or as a blitzer, that's only half the half the game. That's only half the battle. And you know what we saw Jadeveon Clowney get Joe Burrow wrapped up and not bring him to the ground. Uh, Joe Burrow is like a, a knee injury and uh, and uh, wasn't the the most mobile guy Calf already before and all that. that. Yeah. Like he's he's a bit of a sitting duck. Couldn't get him on the ground. Caleb Williams is going to look at you and make you look foolish. We watched Pac-12 after dark for too many years to to see him do that. And then on top of that, right the the. One thing that you can do if you're a little overmatched is bend but don't break, right? You you can say, let's keep everything in front of us. You can say, um, let's be a bit cautious. And then when the windows shrink, because we get to use the the end line as as part of our defense, when the windows shrink, that's when we'll, we'll bow our neck and fight back. It's not what the Panthers do. Yeah, it's one thing if teams get into the red zone and you force field goals, okay, you mm-hmm. can live with that, but... Teams are scoring at an 87% clip touchdowns in the red zone this season. Dave Canales today spoke with the media about the red zone defensive struggles. Schematically, just the guys working together, communicating. It all starts with the run game. I think when I flip when I flip my hat to the offensive coach, when you look at the best red zone teams across the league every year, it starts with the run game. Um, it starts with teams that are able to kind of continue to make yards to get you closer, you know, and that's an area that we're really focused on working on um, as a defense. And so when if you can make a team one-dimensional in the red zone and force them to pass, that's when your, your ability for success increases, you know, and so that's something that we've been, you know, attacking really and, um, and emphasizing that, and I expect to see just incremental growth, you know, in those areas as we go. There are also going to be moments. There are also going to be moments when the Panthers just struggle because they don't have the dudes. One of the plays that stood out to me, you mentioned the Trevin Wallace fourth down stop. Mm -hmm. Earlier in that drive, it was third and long. It was like third and 11. And Gerald Everett, the backup tight end, for the Chicago Bears, catches well, a, a ball about went, four. Wasn't he playing for the Rams? I think so. Um, Seahawks, but he caught a ball about four yards short of the sticks before you're four yards short of the first down marker on third down and long. And Nick Scott was right there to make a tackle, and he whiffs on it, and Everett gets the first down, and that drive continued. And I was thinking, man, if you get a stop there, your defense gets off the field, you're rested, you feel like, hey, we got a stop, and we're only down by seven. Mm-hmm. You're only down by seven. But yet that drive continued, which means you had to be out on the field longer. Your team wore down even further. And then sure enough, your offense, three plays later after you did get the ball, fumbled because Tommy Trumbull got knocked out, touched down the other way eventually. And then you had to go a few plays, turnover, back the other way. And before you know it, you're down 27 to 
Seven. seven. Yeah. It's like, what, what happened here? And and part of that is, right, maybe Jordan Fuller makes a tackle. Maybe. But he's on the IR, so... so. But we were told that we had three starting safeties between Jordan Fuller, Xavier Woods, and Nick Scott. If you got three, you got none. Uh, right? If you got two quarterbacks, you got no quarterbacks. You got three starting two safeties, a free safety, a strong safety, and an extra. Maybe that just means your free safety and your strong safety aren't uh, aren't good enough. It's it's a defense that is going to struggle. We've talked about it. We said it last week. They've moved resources from the defense to the offense. It becomes a big issue when the offense isn't living up to its side of the bargain, when they're not possessing the football, when they're not scoring points. This defense is going to be exposed. When you have a running back that's playing like Chuba Hubbard is and an offensive line that's opening up run holes the way like the, the offensive line is, there's no business to put the offense in that many uh, – or sorry, put the defense in that many tough situations and put them out there over and over and over again. Pick up first downs, keep them on the bench, let them get a, a, a little bit more rest, and maybe they don't make as many blunders.